Okay, just first off, forget everything I said about the prior Warlords. I might have built them up a little bit too much. Doflamingo with his Awakened Devil Fruit and Conqueror's Hockey. That's nothing. That's that's child's play. Mihawk, greatest swordsman in the world. <laughs> Today's Warlord went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Mihawk and did not get hurt at all. We are, of course, referring to the best warlord, the strongest warlord, Clown Star Buggy! Oh my goodness. I kind of, you know what? Part of me is kind of disappointed that I didn't get to do Buggy as one of the first ones, you know? But I really am glad that it took you, because it's like you gotta finish him off. You know, he's the headliner. He's the one that we've all been waiting for, and I got a lot of shit to talk about this guy. But let's all start with the idea that... This character started off more or less as a comic relief. Now, I, I don't know if Oda was, like, intending him to become more relevant later on. In fact, I think he did, considering what his backstory is like when we first meet him. Uh, but this was really the first villain that Luffy faced that had Devil Fruit abilities. Um, gave Luffy and the gang a little bit of trouble, but keep in mind, this was back when the Straw Hat Pirates consisted of two people. Uh, and one of them had a critical sword wound at the moment. Um, and, and then Nami was there too, but she wasn't like a member yet, and she was just kind of helping out. Um, actually, fun fact, Buggy has never been defeated in one-on-one -on -one combat by somebody. Yeah, it's always been multiple people. Um, but yeah, so it was the first, one, one of the first arcs in the story, uh, one of the first villains, I guess, designed by Oda. In fact, Zoro was originally supposed to be part of Buggy's crew in the original. But anyway... Uh, so they have their run in in Orange Town. Buggy is just kind of this low-level pirate in East Blue. His bounty is 15 million. You know, uh, you know, out of all the major villains that Luffy encountered, the only one that I think had lower bounty than that was Alvida, and Alvida only had like five mil, uh, five million or something like that. Buggy was 15. Uh, even Kuro, Kuro's old bounty, which was inactive, it was at least 16 million. Krieg was 17, and then Arlong was 20. Um, so it's easy to see Buggy as just like a throwaway villain, you know, okay, you know, Luffy shows up, one of the first villains in the story, uh, you know, like, Nami ties his, uh, body parts off, Luffy gum gum bazookas him off the island, and then you never see him again. Or do you? Because out of all those villains, though, you actually get to see Buggy play a crucial role in the story again. The next time he shows up in Logtown, he actually almost manages to kill Luffy. I'm not fucking with you guys here. This isn't like a moment where it's like, yeah, right, Buggy was about to kill Luffy. I'm sure Luffy would have had something under his sleeve. No, no, he was straight up right about to kill Luffy, okay? And it's only just because of Luffy's massive amount of luck he has, as well as with his dad being there that managed to save him. Buggy literally had him locked stocks in the freaking Logtown Gallows, ready to lop off his head with a freaking scimitar or whatever. It was like three inches from his head, Luffy resigned to his fate, was like, guess I'm dead, guys, see ya! <laughs> and, uh, lightning struck him at the last minute, which of course had something to do with, uh, Dragon's Devil Fruit abilities, and, uh, that's how Luffy was saved, being rubber, of course. Um, but yeah, he came really close to that, though. Now, just because Luffy might have had better luck there, Buggy also has his fair share of luck. In fact, that's one of the characters where I actually want to consider, like, Okay, is the fact that he is such a lucky son of a bitch really the fact? Is that just like a comic thing, or is that like supposed to be indicative of his powers? Is that actually going to lead to something later on? It's the same thing with King in One Punch Man. You know, King's sort of this like like com comic relief character, but then you start thinking, he's like, no, is his ability really is just he's so lucky and so fortunate that everything seems to work out his way sometimes? Um, now, 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 shit doesn't always work Buggy's way, but he's attained levels that he does not deserve, right? Um, so let's talk about his Devil Fruit. This is a little bit scattershotted, but let's just get into it, because there's a shit ton of stuff I have to talk about Buggy, so well, whatever. So his Devil Fruit, like I said, one of the first Devil Fruits revealed in the story that Luffy actually has to fight against, uh, his Devil Fruit is the Bara Bara no Mi, or the Chop Chop Fruit. So basically what this fruit does is allows him to separate his body uh, into different parts. Uh, we've seen him break up his part, like, his, just, like, separate his uh, lower half from his upper half. Uh, you know, he can, you know, throw a punch, and he can extend his fist out, and he can just send it all right back in. Uh, there's kind of, like, this field that's around him whenever he separates his body. And as long as his feet are on the ground, think of it like, yeah, it's still his body. It's kind of like whatever Law's fruit. 
you know, Law's Fruit for some reason can remove hearts, but they can still keep beating, and the, you know, the, the person doesn't die immediately. So it's like they're still connected even though they're separated. So with Buggy's Fruit, it's kind of a something similar where it's like, yeah, he can move his body around, but his feet still have to be on the ground or otherwise he won't be able to float, you know? Just like if your feet are on the ground, you won't be able to stand. Um, so with this case, he has like a field around him. As long as his feet are on the ground, he can, you know, manipulate that. Uh, if someone's holding his feet and he stays close to them, he can essentially fly, you know, short range flying abilities. Um, his weakness to his fruit is sort of the opposite of Luffy's. And I think that's one of the first, one of the reasons why his double fruit was like one of the first ones utilized. So with Luffy's Gamu Gamu no Mi, uh, he is weak against slicing attacks and he attacks with a sword. However, he's immune to blunt attacks. Anything's with like a club or a hammer because he's made of rubber, he can just bounce it right off. Uh, Buggy's the exact opposite. He is weak to blunt attacks, but he's uh, actually very impervious to uh, cutting attacks as long as hockey is not involved, of course. We see this quite, well, we see it with Zoro for Zoro just like fuck this clown and just cuts him in half and then Buggy reassembles himself and then stabs Zoro. But later on, we see it displayed in much more um, like ridiculous fashion when he goes up against Mihawk. Well, it doesn't go up against Mihawk. Luffy just kind of grabs him and throws it like gum gum scapegoat and just throws him right in front of uh, Mihawk as a human shield. And then Mihawk sees this fucking crazy clown, you know, red nose freak coming at him. And he's like, oh my God, no. And Mihawk's just like, all right, I don't know what the fuck this is, but and then turns him into literally fucking fish bait. Slices him like as thin as fucking bologna, bologna slices. And you have this moment where he's just, like, all shredded, and he just, like, repairs himself. And he's like, oh my god, would you stop? It's not working! And that that was a moment, before we really understood how hockey worked in this story, that was a fucking, like, what the- So Buggy is strong, is impervious to Mihawk? What the fuck is this? What is this nonsense? But no, no, Mihawk didn't use hockey. If he would have used hockey, then Buggy would have been reduced to a, a literal pile of mincemeat on the ground. But hey- at least it showed that, like, to the utmost, like, does he have a limit on how much he can be, you know, separated? But, and clearly he doesn't. As long as hockey or no one, like, none other, like, Sea Prism Stone or anything else is not involved, he can basically be sliced into really fucking paper-thin shreds and he can still reconstitute himself. So, pretty handy devil fruit. In fact, if he trained with it a little bit, learned about hockey, maybe awakened it, he would be a tough customer. Look at Luffy's fruit. Luffy's the fucking rubber rubber fruit. That's one of those weird paramethia you would look at at first glance and say like, okay, there's not much you can really do with that. Look how all the shit Luffy can do with it. So buggy, train, buddy, train. You can figure this shit out. Combine it with fucking hockey and shit. You can like, somebody gets trapped in your field and then you like armament hockey your entire body, go into your fucking like circus act thing and you can like be hitting them from like, like speed blitzing them from 15 different directions. You can make this shit happen, okay? Um, but like I said, Buggy is sort of like, you know, he doesn't really need to train, I guess, because usually shit just kind of works out his way, even in, like, indirect fashions. For instance, after his first defeat by Luffy, he gets, uh, turned into Chibi Buggy, and he's wandering the seas as a Chibi man. He runs into Gaimon, that guy that's trapped in the chest, has a little chat with him, eventually Alvida picks him up, and he becomes you know, kind of in league with him, reunites with his crew, gets his body back, and then, you know, goes to Logtown to take out Luffy. Afterwards, after his defeat at Logtown, after Dragon just nukes him with a lightning bolt, uh, he decides to, you know, travel the Grand Line and, I guess, trick figure out, you know, kind of working on a way to defeat Luffy, but also searching for treasure, because he's the... Call me crazy, he's a pirate that actually looks for treasure. I mean, I know Luffy's looking for the One Piece, but, I mean, there's other treasures along the way Luffy doesn't usually get that excited about. Um, like when they got all that treasure at Thriller Bark, I think Nami was way more excited about that than Luffy, than Luffy was. Luffy just cares about the One Piece. That's really, that's the only treasure I guess he really gives a shit about. Well, anyway, while Buggy is looking for treasure, most notably, uh, the treasure left behind by a guy named Captain John, uh, Captain John's treasure, he ends up on this wacky adventures, which I kind of would, would, would wish we would see a, a side story of that. We saw a side story with Buggy when he lost his body in the East Blue Saga, but we didn't see a side story of that. So uh, Buggy's just traveling around the Grand Line, you know, stopping at islands that he thinks is where, you know, Captain John's treasure is. One time he gets, you know, oh, it's just a mining tunnel. So he ends up, like, working with a mining crew. Like, hey, man, this is, this is great. You know, hard day's work, wipe the sweat off your brow. This is a real man's job. And then... He's like, wait, what the fuck am I doing? And he, like, you know, leaves that island. Eventually, he ends up at an island with a tunnel that leads to a marine outpost. Oopsie. 
Uh, Bogart was in the in the position there. Bogart's the guy that kind of trained Kobe and Helmepo. That's sort of like Gark's right hand man. So Bogart, Bogart was there and uh, you know manages to capture Buggy. His crew gets away, um, but he gets thrown and impaled down. Uh, however, it's through getting thrown and impaled down. You might think that's not very lucky, but it's getting through impaled down that he was able to eventually get out through Luffy and not just get out, but he was able to have an entire like you know fleet of of pirates at his command that are actually all usually stronger than him uh and and, and they just ended up believing his bullshit you know like oh B captain buggy's our savior he'll lead us all to victory and i mean it was kind of not him that did it but he kind of did sort of like they got through marine ford and they thought like oh yeah he's some big shot but it's usually like other people doing the fighting in the background um and so uh i should talk about shanks now leading to that um so buggy has a history with uh shanks buggy actually used to be the uh a, a colleague of, of shanks working on goldie roger's ship and this is what i mean but i say that it's not I, I don't know if oda was setting this up but it seemed like he was because uh, even though he didn't say it was goldie roger's ship way back in the east blue saga we saw rayleigh there and Oda had a design for Rayleigh very specifically back then. So I think he had it all set up, you know, at least to some extent that, you know, Buggy was going to be on Goldie Rogers crew. Now, this is also what I say, like, luck is a big element here because after Goldie Roger gets executed, after the pirate, after the, uh, the Roger pirates go their separate ways, um, you know, the government, you know, they, they, they want to find them, obviously. Like, they, they, like, look at what happened with Roger. After he died, they tracked down every woman that he banged. And, and killed them or you know tried to find his kid basically um so it's very clear like these are like the high the, the, these roger pirates we need to find them and get rid of them so it's it's very clear that either the roger pirates they're going to be in hiding like with crocus or they're going to be making big names for themselves like shanks did shanks went on to become a yonko one of the four emperors and I, I feel like part of the reason why he be we'll be getting to shanks in another video but i feel like part of the reason that the government feared him enough and how he attained his emperor status was because he was a, uh, even if he was just a cabin boy, he was still part of Goldie Rogers' crew. And they don't fuck around with that. And the fact that Buggy somehow managed to maintain piracy while being under the radar is nothing short of miraculous. And even the, even the Marines were confused by that. They're at, after the whole Impel Down incident, they're looking through their papers and they're like, I don't know how you slipped through our shit, but yeah, you were totally a member on Goldie Rogers' crew, so we're coming for you now, clown. Um, and then, of course, Buggy's freaking out, like, oh my god. So he ends up going to Marine Ford, he meets Shanks there, and he's giving Shanks some fucking sass and shit, and all the prisoners see him do this, and of course, Shanks is one of the most powerful pirates in the world, and Shanks doesn't care, because that's just like, oh, you're Buggy, you're my old friends. Having seen the interactions between those two is great, you know? Because Shanks is like, you know, one of the most powerful people on the planet and buggy's there just talking to him like it's old times because you know they don't care they're old friends sort of and everybody to everybody else though it's like what the fuck are you doing he could kill you but he doesn't even care that's our captain buggy for you hot damn straight so after the whole mess there after you know meeting luffy and uh impel down after teaming up with him going through those adventures getting all the the crew members for them there after surviving marine ford they eventually get out uh, Mr. Three also teams up with them. He uh, meets up with Alvida and his old crew, and they all think, okay, everything's good. We Not only did I get out of Impel Down somehow alive, I also ended up with an entire group of people that are way stronger than me that will listen to my every word as if I am their Christ figure, and I made it back to my old crew, and I'm, I'm good. I'm fine. Oh, man, I'm glad I survived that, right? Just then, as they're partying, the government sends a message to Buggy, and that's how we left off on the time skip, you know, and then we found out later on what that letter was. Buggy became indu uh, inducted into the Warlords. Yes, the Seven Warlords. So it's fucking crazy, right? Buggy the Clown, now a Warlord of the Sea. <laughs> we've, we've gone some crazy, it's been a crazy journey, hasn't it? But, like I said, from the government's perspective, like, once again, they're, they're buying all this bullshit, too. Be like, okay, he managed to, he, along with Luffy, were the freaking conspirators behind this massive release at Impel Down. He was a member of Goldie Rogers' crew. He managed to lay low all this time. He's acquainted with red-haired Shanks. Of course this guy is strong, right? 
So we've only seen him one time after the time skip. We, 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 he was mentioned a few times, but the first time he was actually seen was after Dress Rosa, rather recently, where we see him at, uh, I think it's Kalibali Island is the place he set up shop. And it's, it's uh, what his thing is as a warlord is he manages the pirate delivery service, Buggy's Delivery. So basically how it works is that I guess he has an entire organization of really strong pirates working under him, and whenever a certain country or somebody needs pirates to work, kind of like hired mercy, Scenarios, he rents them out for a nominal rate and that's what he does and once again everybody working under him buys his shit a except for his old crew of course except for like mr three and alvida and and you know, like Kamaji and all those people they kind of understand what he's really doing here um in fact when he was a warlord when we do see him at, at kabaji island what he uh, kalibali island what he does kabaji island <laughs> what we see him there is he actually has like a giant like cape or tarp and he like attaches his body to it to make him seem like he's like this huge guy like I am your master I am a warlord but in, like just another one of his tactics to make seem like more important um so that's all we really know about buggy but the fan theories with this guy are incredible you know considering where he came from and where he's at now and his past and everything people have seriously thought that he's going to be something way more relevant than he is maybe not like revealed to be super powerful or anything like that who knows maybe over the time skip he trained a little bit but from the way he acted and the way like because um when he was in the when he was like giving his big speech to his uh to his pirate crew this was right around the time that uh, that he got the news that harjion and the and the, and the uh the new giant pirates have left his crew Harjion was the uh, pirate, the giant that, you know, Luffy met on Dressrosa, and he was actually part of Buggy's delivery. He was, like, one of their top mercenaries, basically. And after he encountered Luffy and everything like that, he's like, I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna leave Buggy's delivery. And so, after Buggy found out about that, and he's like, oh, all four of them left, and all the four of the giants that we had, they're gone. Buggy was like, oh, oh, shit, there's some of our strongest, oh, fuck, okay, uh, <laughs> like, he was severely worried, so... If Buggy got severely stronger over the time skip, you know, which I don't think happened, I don't think he would be that concerned, but, you know, Buggy is still Buggy, okay? He might have gotten a little bit stronger, but I'm pretty sure the Warlord position just basically went to his head. But once again, if he trains, he could maybe do something. So, one of the other theories going around is that uh, it was kind of, sort of a joke at first when I first read it, but start thinking into it, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this one, but... It happened with Gold Roger. Remember when Gold Roger was just considered Gold Roger? Like, no, 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 no. His name is not Gold Roger. I think it was Dr. Kareha was the one that actually said his name is Gold D. Roger. Okay, well, if that's the case, then maybe Buggy is Buggy D. Clown. Get it? Huh? Now, I will say, though, that one of the weird things that tipped me off on this is that uh, when you see Buggy's Delivery Service, there's, like, a logo of Buggy's Delivery, and it's a BD. Now, obviously, that stands for Buggy's Delivery, but I don't know. Oda likes to do that shit sometimes. That would, You know what? If he did that, I would totally buy it. You know, I, I seriously would. If, if, if Oda decided to go with it like he's Buggy D. Clown, I would... Yeah, sure, why not? Like, like once again, just because he's a D doesn't mean he's going to be, like, extremely powerful, but it would be an interesting way to explain a lot of the good fortune he's had, you know, and a good way to explain how he keeps, you know, how he, you know, he's, he's friends with Shanks, he run, keeps running into Luffy and shit like that, how things just always plan out that way. I think that would be an interesting way to see it. Um, maybe, maybe not. What's your opinion on that? I don't know. Uh, if that was the case, though, I want to also say that if we ever find out Shanks' full name, I want to say Shanks is going to be a D, too. I would, I would say most certainly Shanks would have to be a D as well. Not... I mean, like, like Whitebeard wasn't, so it's not like just because he's a Yonko, but I don't know. Having close relations and the hat and everything, it would be weird for, I'm Goldie Roger, the first possessor of the hat, and Monkey D. Luffy is the third possessor of the hat, and then Shanks wasn't a D either, and he was the second. I feel like Shanks should be a D, obviously. Uh, just give Shanks the D, Oda, just make it, just make it a thing. Um... But yeah, for, so further along in the story, Buggy's going to play a role. He's going to play a role now that he's a warlord, obviously. Oda seriously wants to do more stuff with him. Um, but it's just crazy, man, looking at all the shit that, like, looking where he's come as sort of like this, like, low-ranking, pathetic pirate in the East Blue. You know, he took over that little town, and it was just like, okay, you bullied the residents. They, they weren't fighters. You just bullied the town into taking it over. 
and then all the shit that's happened to him since then, leading up to Impel Down, leading up to getting out, and what he at Marineford, and then eventually becoming a warlord. I mean, it's been a crazy ride, um, and he, he, he's a very interesting character. I kind of miss him. Part of my favorite moments, like I said, is like Shanks interacting with Buggy, but also seeing Buggy's interactions with Luffy and Impel Down and up to Marine Four and the way he's acted and stuff. You know, I especially act whenever he he tries to act really big. You know, like when he's like, "I'll lead the charge out of here" and shit. And then eventually he he goes into um, when uh, Jean Bay's taking uh, a people to go and take one of the uh, the battleships so they can escape. He's like, okay, I can't carry that many people, but who's coming? So Crocodile and Mr. One obviously come along, but then Buggy's like, I'm coming too, and he acts like such a badass, and he's like, ah, oh, fuck you guys, I'm more safer with these warlords than back there with Magellan, screw off. Um, so he's a very funny character. I hope he's utilized a lot more in the story. And what are, what are your theories about this? Do you think that he's actually going to become somewhat of a... a I don't want to say a villain, because, you know, Luffy and him are kind of on good terms, at least I want to say, you know, um, I don't want to see them fight, certainly, they've already had their little scuffle now, I don't think that's going to go down, but even if, if Buggy himself is not going to fight, I would like to see the, the delivery service play, you know, it, it later on in the story in some way, because um, there's a few members, like, I like, I'm not, I like a Mr. Three, I like Mr. Three, I'd like to see more of him, um, Alvida, you know, that she's okay, whatever, um, you know, I'm sure, like, if Harjion was part of Buggy's delivery service, I'm sure there might be some other pirates that we might have heard of before that are maybe part of it now that are just kind of buying into Buggy's bullshit, or even if they're not buying into it, they're just like, all right, well, okay, he's clearly a freaking pansy ass, but who's surrounding himself with strong people that protect him. But, you know, it's you get to be a pirate, you get to do whatever you want. That's pretty cool, so that's nice. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I would like to see more with Buggy in the future. I would like to see him be relevant later on in, in the story in some way. Um, that's pretty much all I have to say about him. It's, yeah, interesting character. Uh, very strong, but most powerful of the warlords, obviously. Um, so next video is going to be Edward Weevil. Now, some people have questioned, like, how are you going to do a video on Edward Weevil, Matt? He is, uh, but one single, like, he was just revealed, like, less than, I don't know, 20? No, I think a little bit more. I think it was between Dressrosa and Zoe, so not very long ago, certainly. And we only got the one scene with him. Um, it's going to be a video focused more on theories, I have to say, than anything else. Uh, but I do have some stuff to say about Weevil. So uh, it's going to be probably not a very long video, probably like maybe 10 minutes or so. But I do have some stuff I want to say about him uh, and how he might fit into the story, of course, and his role going around uh, eliminating members of the Whitebeard Pirates. Um, so anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. This will be Techie 101 signing out. Buggy, man. Buggy D. Clown.